So it's been a few days since I posted a discussion video and showed my happy face with my freshly cut hair. I want to talk about, well, every Yu-Gi-Oh deck is budget, even something like Cash Tira that at pre-sale was over $1,000. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button and like button and the ding dong taco bell notification bell so we can keep on climbing even higher to the levels of super saiyan 3 ladies and gentlemen currently sitting at over 1100 subscribers 1115 every time i say the number it just goes up so i'm just going to keep on saying the number thank you all so much for all the support from the bottom of my heart i truly do appreciate it. i hope you're having a fantastic day and yes i did get a fresh haircut but it looks like a porcupine got its boner stuck in a blender because i've got a little porcupine sprout anyways <laughs> so uh, I wanted to talk about something interesting that I hope it doesn't come off as me like trying to be a, a narcissist or, or an ass um, because that's really not the point of this. The point that I want to make is that whenever you are trying to build a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! and I've said this in my market watches and multiple people on YouTube have said this about getting cards for decks that you want to build, you want to get the shit in advance as much as you can. You know, I told the story about how I got my Cash Tira Unicorn in the mail six months after I ordered it and got my refund. I bought it at $14. I got all three of my unicorns at $14. Now the card's sitting anywhere from like 20 to 25 bucks, you know, as it's going up and down. Fenrir's I got at, I think I kind of got in late at like 55 to 60 bucks. They were as high as 70. Now they've dropped down to like the 50, 55 range last time I checked. And so uh, a lot of people will say that Yu-Gi-Oh is just super expensive. A lot of people will say, you know, you have to have money in order to play the game. And while that is true in, I would say, a lot of cases, I would argue that especially in this format now, now that we're no longer in a tier zero format, that right now you can pretty much build whatever deck you want to play without breaking your bank. You know, if you want to play like, let's say, Runic, right? Like, Okay, tips are a little bit of money. Let's say you could pick them up for 30 bucks a piece. Fountains are what, 15 a piece? Uh, Hugans are 10 to 15 a piece. You know, besides those cards, like everything else is cheap AF, ladies and gentlemen. And then you can also kind of like make it cheaper, like depending on how many copies of a card you play. You know, I've seen builds of Runic where they only play two Hugan. I'm not saying that that's a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying that is an option if you don't want to have to get that third copy. Or even trading for cards from people at your locals or a regional YCS, what have you. You have these options to make these decks cheaper. Let's use Cash Tira as an example. Since at, at pre-sale, that deck was like at its highest, like $1,400. Like, if you didn't have anything cash tier related, like, you bought everything for the main side and extra. Well, not even a side deck, the main and extra. Um, when you're trying to build this, right, you want to get the stuff as early as possible. And so, in the case of cash Tira, you know, yes, it was over $1,000, but... When you look at the cards that you're able to pick up for cheap, you know, even if it's the super rares or the commons, okay, Ogre, Birth, Shangri-La, boom, done. You know, if you got in on Fenrir's early, you were paying maybe 50 bucks a piece. You know, if your budget is like, let's say $300, you know, on the high end, okay, you pick up Fenrir's 50 a piece, that's 150. Unicorns were as low as eight bucks at one point. I got in actually kind of late at 14. But you can see where by getting in early like that, you end up saving yourself money down the long haul. If you look at the case with Photon Hypernova with all that new Cash Tira stuff, you know, yes, you have some expensive things like Cash Tira Theosis or, you know, even things like Rise Heart or Cash Tira Tier Element, they're about nine to 10 bucks. You know, as long as you didn't get them on presale, you saved your money. You know, Cash Tira, a Rise Heart, the Exceed was like 30 to $40 on presale. And now it's like, what, 15 to $20? So just by getting it after the presales, you're saving yourself money. Another big thing too is budgeting. And I know that that sounds kind of obvious too, but it really is the God to honest truth. If you're budgeting your money correctly, like you shouldn't have an issue, you know, minus bills and things to play whatever deck you want. And on top of that, even if you do have bills, I would argue that there are a lot of decks that you can play on the budget. You know, let's take Sword Soul as an example. Once Maze of Memories comes out next month in March, there should be no reason why you can't pick up a core of Sword Soul, like three of everything, for like 100 to $150 with a full extra deck. We're getting a Baron reprint in March in Maze of Memories. Currently, Baron's like $80. So outside of Baron, how much money are you really fucking paying for Sword Soul? Like, honestly. And the deck is like totally viable now, now that we're no longer in a tier zero format. It's like tier two to Rogue, like I said in my tier list video. But still, like... 
that's bonkers to me. If I wasn't playing Cash Tira, I'd be telling people, go and pick up Sword Soul because it's so cheap. I'm almost tempted to pick up the deck core just to have. It's kind of like the new Sky Striker. The deck core is just worth having because there's potential for it to get better down the line and it's just a good consistent deck and it's totally fair. Now, the other thing I want to mention too is things from back in the day, like Upper Deck. There have been cases, especially back in the Upper Deck days, where the decks were easily $3,000. You look at something like Teledad format. You know, that was when I first started playing competitively. I've been playing this game for almost like 20 years now because I started when really I was like seven years old. But I went to my first locals, you know, back in like 2008, 2009, right before they changed the fusion deck to the extra deck. And Teledad was expensive as shit. You were paying like $3,000. That $3,000 would guarantee you a regional top, but you were paying $3,000 because you had to get Crush Card Virus, which was like, I think over $1,000. Like it was fucking bananas. And then of course you had Dark Arm Dragons that were like 250 bucks a pop back when like secret rares got short printed out the ass so you do have cases like that or even zodiac format where like i remember spending 700 dollars on zodiac format like if you look up the video on youtube if you type in like avery lr32 rant you'll probably find my video where i'm like ranting about losing 700 dollars on zodiac i lost my ass on zodiac ladies and gentlemen and so but that was my own fault because I got in late. Like, I remember buying three barrages at $99 a piece. 99 ladies and gentlemen. I lost my ass on Zodiac. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, but you do have these options available to you. You know, if you want to get sealed product, like, not for, like, $80 a box, buy the shit on presale. Like I, like I said in my live stream uh, when I opened up my Photon Hypernova case, I got my case through um, David Adams Card World. Like, if you just type in David Adams Card Shop, they've got Cyberstorm Access on presale for $750. You might be thinking $750 is a lot of money. It's better than paying fucking almost $1,100 for a case like I did of Power of the Elements. Like, holy ball sacks, ladies and gentlemen. Th th there's no money to be made at that point. And, you know, this comes from the perspective of more of, like, if you're a competitive player. Like, if you're a casual player... Like, you can really kind of play whatever you want at Locals, man. Like, I know people, you know, raw dog me for saying that the Dark World structure deck is shit and the Trap Dirk structure deck is shit. But you have to understand I'm coming from a competitive standpoint. You know, you can play whatever you want at Locals. You could play Gate Guardian Beatdown at your Locals. Like, it, it don't really matter. So, at the end of the day, if you want to budget, you do have these options available to you. You know, look at Labyrinth. Go on TCG Player, look at the little market chart that they have, and watch the roller coaster that is the Labyrinth prices. Before Big Welcome Labyrinth came out, the deck was cheap. Like, I think you could probably get a Labyrinth core for like 100 to 150 bucks. Like, that's that's not bad, or whatever that converts to, to European money. I know I've got a decent amount of European viewers. And so, I think it's something worth bringing up. Like, again, I'm not trying to, like, sound like I'm a pompous ass who can afford whatever deck I want. It's just... You know, I have my own money set aside for playing the game, and that's how I choose to use it. And the other thing I do, too, is that usually, usually, minus certain cases of, like, where sets are good, like Power of the Elements or Photon Hypernova, I usually just buy singles. You know, like, I won't even do the presale. I'll wait till the prices calm down. I wait until all the cards are listed and we're not in the presale game anymore. And I just buy whatever deck I want. In the meanwhile, like in the interim, I'm saving my money. I'm saving up that amount so I know how much I want to spend on the deck. I go and buy, like let's just say I go out and buy Cash Tier for 700 Once I go to the regional or YCS, whatever it is I'm going to, whether I top or not, if there's no other regionals or YCSs coming up, I sell the deck. I just sell it to the vendors. I sell it to a player, whoever I can sell it to, to recoup my money. Like a perfect example would be, God, what was it? I think... I remember getting a case of Code of the Duelist that had Trick Stars in it. And there were a couple other cards for Trick Stars that I bought because I didn't pull it off my case. I topped, well, topped. I got my invite with Trick Star and I turned around and sold the deck to the vendors and I think like I broke even on Trick Star. So like now I've recouped that money. Now I have that money to spend towards the next deck that I want to play and I'm no longer in the hole because I bought everything for Trick Star. So, guys, these are just my tips and advice on how I tend to spend money on the game and how I invest my time and money and things like that. Let me know down in the comments, are there anything that you, any things, I guess, plural, that you do that I haven't mentioned that, you know, could help people save money? I think it's just all about budgeting and just getting the cards early if you see it's a deck that you want to play. You know, if new branded support's coming out, get your branded stuff now. You know, that type of thing. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.